join us on Patreon, and become part of our journey to uncover history's untold stories. Your support helps us create in-depth content, bring hidden narratives to life, and keep history alive for everyone. The modern world wakes each morning to a quiet miracle. Screens glow to life at the touch of a button. Documents appear instantly. Ideas travel across continents in seconds. For most people, the personal computer feels so ordinary that its origins fade into the background of everyday life. Yet behind this revolution stand a small group of engineers whose decisions reshaped how humanity works, learns, and communicates. Among them is Mark Dean, a man whose brilliance helped turn the computer from an elite laboratory machine into a personal companion, yet whose name is rarely spoken with the same reverence as the companies and product his work made possible. His story is not only about technology, but about persistence, vision, and the quiet power of engineering to change history. Mark Evan Dean was born on March 2, 1957, in Jefferson City, Tennessee, during a period when the United States was racing through scientific transformation while still deeply entangled in racial inequality. His father worked as an engineer, and from an early age, Dean was surrounded by the language of problem-solving and invention. He has often spoken about how his father encouraged curiosity, allowing him to tinker with mechanical devices and imagine how things work beneath the surface. This early exposure planted the seeds of a mindset that would later thrive in the world of computer engineering. Growing up in the American South during the 1960s and 1970s, Dean is acutely aware of the social barriers around him, but he was equally aware that mastery of knowledge could be its own form of quiet resistance. Dean pursued his undergraduate education at the University of Tennessee, where he earned a degree in electrical engineering. At a time when computer science and electrical engineering were rapidly converging, he developed a strong foundation in both hardware design and systems thinking. His academic excellence led him to Stanford University, one of the epicenters of technological innovation, where he completed a master's degree and later a doctorate in electrical engineering. Stanford in the late 1970s and early 1980s was a crucible of ideas that would eventually give rise to Silicon Valley's dominance and Dean absorbed both the technical rigor and the culture of innovation that defined the era. In 1980, Mark Dean joined IBM, a company that, at the time, stood as one of the most powerful and influential forces in global computing. IBM dominated the market for large mainframe computers used by governments, corporations, and universities. Yet the company faced a growing challenge. Smaller, more affordable computers were beginning to appear, the competitors were experimenting with machines designed for individual users rather than entire institutions. IBM recognized that the future might depend on entering this emerging market, but doing so required a fundamental shift in design philosophy. Dean became part of a small, fast-moving team tasked with creating what would become the IBM personal computer. This project, later known as the IBM PC, was unlike most IBM initiatives. Rather than relying on proprietary components designed entirely in-house, the team was encouraged to use existing technologies and focus on speed and flexibility. This environment allowed Dean's talents to flourish. His most significant contribution came through his work on the system architecture that allowed peripheral devices to communicate with the computer's central processing unit. One of Dean's most influential achievements was the co-invention of the industry standard architecture bus commonly known as the ISA bus. This innovation may sound technical and abstract, but its impact was profound. The ISA bus provided a standardized way for components such as printers, disk drives, graphics cards, and modems to connect to the computer. Before this development, computers were often closed systems, tightly controlled by manufacturers. By enabling third-party developers to create compatible hardware, the ISA bus helped create an open ecosystem that encouraged innovation, competition, and rapid expansion of capabilities. This architectural decision fundamentally changed the trajectory of personal computing. It allowed users to customize their machines, upgrade components, and adapt their computers to specific needs. The personal computer became not just a static product, but a flexible platform. This openness accelerated the growth of the software industry 
and laid the groundwork for the explosion of applications that followed. In many ways, the ISA bus helped democratize computing, turning the PC into a tool for creativity and productivity rather than a rigid corporate appliance. Dean also played a crucial role in the development of color graphics for personal computers. At a time when many machines displayed only monochrome text, he worked on the design of color PC monitors and associated hardware that allowed computers to present richer visual information. This advancement expanded the potential uses of the PC, making it more suitable for education, design, entertainment, and user-friendly interfaces. The shift toward color displays helped computers feel more approachable and human-centered, contributing to their rapid adoption in homes and schools. The success of the IBM PC, released in 1981, exceeded expectations. Its open architecture and reliability made it an instant standard in the industry. Other companies quickly began producing IBM-compatible machines, and the personal computer market exploded. Although IBM itself would eventually lose dominance in the PC market, the standards established by the original IBM PC shaped computing for decades. Mark Dean's work sat at the very heart of this transformation, influencing countless devices and systems that followed. Over the course of his career at IBM, Dean was awarded numerous patents, ultimately holding more than 40. These patents covered a wide range of innovations in computer architecture, input-output systems, and performance optimization. Each patent represented not just a technical solution, but a response to real-world challenges faced by users and developers. His work consistently reflected an understanding that technology must serve human needs, not merely showcase engineering prowess. As his career progressed, Dean took on leadership roles within IBM, including serving as a vice president and as a senior technical executive. In these positions, he helped guide research and development efforts at IBM's Almaden Research Center, one of the company's most important innovation hubs. He worked on advanced systems beyond the personal computer, including high-performance computing and emerging technologies that would influence the next generation of machines. Despite his immense contributions, Mark Dean's name remained largely absent from popular narratives about the personal computer revolution. Figures like Steve Jobs and Bill Gates became household names, often portrayed as lone visionaries. Dean's story reveals a different reality, one in which complex systems are built by teams of engineers whose names rarely appear on product boxes or magazine covers. His experience also reflects broader patterns in the history of technology, where the contributions of black engineers and scientists have frequently been overlooked or minimized. Dean himself has spoken candidly about the challenges of navigating the tech industry as a black engineer. While IBM was often more progressive than many companies of its time, the broader industry still reflected societal biases. Dean has emphasized the importance of representation, noting that seeing people who look like you in positions of technical authority can profoundly shape one's sense of possibility. His success stands as both a personal achievement and a symbol of what becomes possible when talent is allowed to flourish despite systemic obstacles. In 1997, Dean and his colleague Dennis Moeller were inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame for their work on the IBM PC. This recognition marked a rare moment when his contributions received public acknowledgement on a national stage. Yet even this honor only hints at the full extent of his influence. Every time a user plugs a device into a computer, upgrades hardware, or benefits from the modular design of modern systems, they are interacting with principles that Dean helped bring into existence. Later in his career, Dean transitioned into academia, becoming a professor at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. In this role, he dedicated himself to teaching and mentoring the next generation of engineers. He brought with him decades of industry experience, offering students insights not only into technical design, but into the ethical and social responsibilities of engineers. His presence in the classroom served as a powerful reminder that innovation is shaped by people, values, and choices, not just equations and code. Dean has also been a vocal commentator on the future of computing. He has expressed skepticism about the idea that innovation has slowed, instead arguing that technology is evolving in new directions that are less visible but equally transformative. 
He has pointed to artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and specialized hardware as areas where the next major breakthroughs are likely to occur. His perspective carries weight precisely because it is grounded in a deep understanding of how past revolutions unfolded. The story of Mark Dean complicates the simplified myths often told about technological progress. It reminds us that the personal computer was not the inevitable product of a single genius, but the result of careful engineering decisions made under pressure within institutions by people who rarely sought the spotlight. Dean's work demonstrates how standards and infrastructure can be as revolutionary as flashy consumer products. By enabling openness, flexibility, and compatibility, he helped create an environment in which countless other innovations could thrive. His legacy also challenges us to reconsider whose stories we tell when we talk about the history of technology. Recognizing figures like Mark Dean does not diminish the achievements of others. Rather, it enriches our understanding of how progress actually happens. It highlights the collaborative nature of innovation and underscores the importance of diversity in shaping technological futures that serve everyone. Today, as personal computers continue to evolve into laptops, tablets, and hybrid devices, the foundational ideas behind them remain strikingly consistent. Modular design, standardized interfaces, and user-focused functionality continue to define successful technologies. These principles trace a direct line back to the work Mark Dean did at IBM in the early 1980s. His influence persists not as a logo or a brand, but as an invisible architecture supporting modern life. In reflecting on Mark Dean's career, one sees not just the arc of an individual life, but a window into the broader forces that shape technological history. His journey from a curious child in Tennessee to a central figure in one of the most important technological revolutions of the 20th century speaks to the power of education, perseverance, and thoughtful design. It also serves as a reminder that history often hides its most important architects in plain sight. As the world continues to debate the impact of technology on society, the story of Mark Dean offers a grounded perspective. It shows that true innovation is rarely about spectacle. It is about solving problems, building systems that last, and empowering others to create. In that sense, every personal computer is a quiet tribute to his work, a testament to an engineer who helped make the digital age possible without ever demanding center stage.